Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, I, uh, I realized the sound was a little low in uh, the previous three episodes, so I apologize for that. Um, I've turned it up a little bit here. Hopefully that's sufficient. Um, anyway, so one thing is that I went and I grabbed... A sword that I didn't grab uh, from the High Wall of Lothric before. So we're gonna read this real quick. A well crafted sword named after the ruined land. Astora, before its fall, was a land replete with royal blood, and this weapon is both a reminder and heirloom of that era. New stance. The other thing is that uh, now that we've kind of left and come back now we can see that gray rat is not taking this whole thing very well heavens she was already dead heavens can't talk to him you can't buy from him you can't do anything from him oh i would do anything for my master I'm not 100% sure of the uh, trigger for uh, drawing out new strength. Um, I mean, I say that. At the foot of Lock I mean, it's. I know it's death. Uh, which actually reminds me of another thing. So, first of all, it's. Can we see it here? No. We now have a new key item called a Dark Sigil. That's what we got when we uh, leveled up our power. And it kind of looks like Dark Sign-ish. Like a circle with flames and then a circle kind of dripping. Something at the bottom. A black gaping hole in the flesh that rem resembles the brand of the undead. The darkness of humanity seeps from this bottomless pitch black hole, the gap filled by the accumulation of the curse. This dark sigil will never heal, but there is a tale told of a firekeeper who returned from the abyss and brought great comfort to a bearer of the curse. So who returned from the abyss? <laughs> I actually don't know what that's all about. So, we know Beatrice went to the Abyss. We know that, uh, um, obviously, um, what's his name? Um, the Knight with the Sif. Oh my god. Um, he, uh, <laughs> all I can think of is Astora. Uh, but, um, anyway, he went to the Abyss. But he, he can't be a firekeeper, he's a man. Firekeepers are only women. And... Dusk of Ulusil went to the abyss, technically, and returned. Although, I don't... I, th I think we learned that she returns. Um... So the dark switch will never hear, but there's a tale told of a firekeeper who returned from the abyss and brought great comfort to the bearer of the curse. Ciaran, Hornstein, Goth, and... Wow, it's just forcing me not to um, think of his name. Complete brain fart. So I know the however many times you die indicates your hollowing level, and that indicates how many times, you know, like each time you can do this. But I feel like sometimes I've met him and I can just level up all at once. So I guess, is it how many times you've died since the beginning of the game? Or since, fine, like, I don't know. I know it's related to death. Um, anyway. I swear. I swear right now. I can't do this.
Artorius. Gosh. Wow. Premier. Premier. Um. Hello. I can't get back in to my game. Uh, Premier Dark Souls lore from. Uh, Huh, it's weird. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> if you want Dark Souls lore, come to me. I can't even remember Artorius's name. Okay. Um, so we want to go to this. Artorius. Well, he wasn't the firekeeper, that's all I was saying. area a lot faster. We've seen all this before. There's uh, apparently something here too. We saw these in other games, but I don't think you, they were an item you could get and have a name. S small throwing machete thrown at enemies to cause bleeding damage. Unique weapon originally used by swordsmen of Carthus, but now popular among bandits and thieves. At this point, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of going through with the main thing, but, uh, one of these, uh, days I will try to make sure my build is something. Okay, the birds didn't just randomly disappear this time. So yeah, these, uh, blow up, so... I am just going to come down here. Great. Always need more tightener. I need six to level up next time. Six. Like, what's that glow? Alright. Yeah, there's a lot of people playing right now. Not used to this experience from Dark Souls 1 and 2. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out a solution for this. But for now... I guess that falls, that falls down. Look at that in a second. Cool, interesting. That guy can die in two hits. Wow. 
Maybe I just hit him wrong? This guy isn't dying in four hits. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm hitting with my fist. Not only do I have great lore, but I'm great at playing this game. Okay. guy in here. He has the kind of crow garb on. Aha! Unkindled, are we? Welcome to my abode. <laughs> I am Cornix, an old pyromancer. A crow in his cage, as you see. Uh -huh. now. But here we are. An encounter for the ages. I hear the unkindled make for fine vessels. Care to learn some pyromancies from this old man? Sure. Ah, most wise. A chance encounter should not be squandered. To reiterate, I am Cornix of the Great Swamp. Ooh. The pleasure is mine. I don't think we've met anyone from the Great Swamp. We know Salomon's from the Great Swamp. And Laurentius. Laurentius, I think, is from the Great Swamp. And uh, we got the deep hand axe. I believe. Uh, even if we didn't, uh, there's definitely no lore on it. <laughs> it's gonna say sturdy, but can break, but is powerful, but is weak. Okay. So now this guy's a little different here. He's got a like a pot. Ooh, I'm doing good damage now. That pot looks like it has organs in it. So yeah, the, it just seems it's kind of interesting, I, I suppose. They seem to be like combining everything of everything. So like this is crows, so it's reminiscent of Velka. There's obviously a statue of Elka here, it says. Yeah, that guy said he was a crow, but he's a pyromancer. And there's a lot of things that remind me of the depths and the butchers and I don't know, it's it's an interesting mix here. I you know, I don't I like it. I mean I, I don't like it and I like it. Ooh. I mean I don't like it in the sense that I feel like some of it our old bonfire. Fire clutch ring. Be interested what the clutch ring will say in this game. Ring depicting a hand grasping a red stone. The old fable in Londor claims that the lure of the clutch ring reaches out to the crestfallen who might otherwise be overcome by despair. Yeah, the clutch rings were associated with Velka. Um, slightly. Because in Dark Souls 2, which is, I think, where they appeared, it said that it looked like um, a certain god's hand or something, or a certain something. Oh, man, I'll have to go back. It also could be referring to Manus, because um, Londor is obsessed with, like, darkness and humanity. Um, but I think it's Velka. What is this weird colored thing? Oh, it's like a magnifying glass. All right, okay, I'm thinking about somewhere else. All right, so we've cleared this way. So we'll go this way first. Oh. Oh. 
I think my, uh, my, like, left bumper sticks from time to time. I don't know. I don't always feel satisfied with it. And then here, yeah, we have, uh, rats, like the death. Oops. These rats are actually kind of nasty. Eustis. Again, it's not going to have any lore on it, probably. Oh, okay, here we go. It does have lore. <laughs> uh, the hand axe. Favored by pyromancers of the Great Swamp, this axe has a short range, but only moderate weight and reasonable damage. Easily wielded and more powerful than it appears. Um, so maybe that's Cornix's. No lore on this. Uh, War Cry, of course. It's been sweet. We know those. A fist fighter's weapon made from thick straps and a leather studded with iron rivets. One two-handed case die are equipped to each hand. Perseverance. Cross arms in front of body to temporarily boost poise. Damage reduced while activated. So this is the uh, where the grave key can be used. And again, we have another reference here to... Uh... Ooh. Still swan, and we get the blood bite ring. By the way, I think we should put on the fire clutch. Clues bleed resistance. I mean, why not? But it says one of the bite rings native to Kareem, which again, this is the another example of using. I mean, so we have Astora, we have uh, Vinheim, we have the Great Swamp. Um, so I mean. This is another reference to a, a land from the original game. I guess we've had a couple from the other game too, but I don't know. I, it just seems weird why these would have persisted, but the other ones didn't. I guess the ex the excuses, they're all coming together, I guess. One of the bike rings native to Kareem. The crafting of these rings is forbidden, perhaps owing to a fear of malleable stone. Owing to a fear of malleable stone. Clerics, however, dabble freely in the art. Uh, we know that clerics do come from Kareem, but yeah, they're always associated with something sinister or weird or Velka or something. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we're gonna go down there, but... I mean, while we're here, we're going to open up this, and now we have the dilapidated bridge bonfire, which I'm just gonna rest at even though... We'll have to beat that rat again. He was not very hard, so. But let us go down. Well, we took very little damage for that, surprisingly. All right. So we use the grave key here, there's clearly a grave here, and then they say there's a statue of Velka, a loincloth. To deprived only manage to rummage just enough cloth to protect their vital parts. So, pray to statue of Velka. So here's Velka, by the way. We can request absolution, but we have not sinned. We can request dissolution, but we are not cursed. And it just says Velka, goddess of sin. I don't know about this. It's a little weird. But it's cool to see Velka. Red Hilted Halberd. Okay, so it's just the same. Although Perseverance is the skill, so 
This might be a cleric weapon. Yeah, red helted halberd is associated with clerics. Huh, interesting. Thought there was a. Is there no longer. Okay, yeah, so here's some more skeletons that look like they're turning into trees. And then we get healing from them. Human pine resin. When I first played through this area, I accidentally fell down over here and I came through this area backwards. So. Yeah, they have scimitars. Or some sort of like semi curved sword. But yeah, like I fell down from up above. I was able to survive. Oh, right. Gotta be careful. Heavy gem. Yeah, so this guy up here, he falls down. Titanite shards. I only have three, I need six. Okay, well, we'll get them. Yeah. Okay. I suppose we probably should have talked to Igon first. But. I don't really care either. When I casually used to play this, that that area, like that, oh, like I had to run away from that because, like, that always killed me. <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah, again, maybe I'm just a lot better from when I last played these sections for the first time. Medium for casting miracles of the gods. Ivory talismans are given only to women clerics, and faith greatly affects their effectiveness. There's a certain frailty to this talisman, which undermines the steadfastness granted by its skill. Unfaltering prayer temporarily increases poise while casting miracles, preventing enemy attacks from interrupting prayer. Works while equipped in either hand. That doesn't look like a woman. But perhaps it was. Now here's someone in the maiden outfit, similar to, I guess, I mean Rhea really. It's Anastasia as well, but Anastasia's was darkened from blood and from dirt. But she looks like Rhea. Uh, who is there? Someone there? Anyone? Oh, please. Whoever you are, touch me. The dark surrounds me, nibbles at my flesh. Little creatures, they never stop biting. So please, hold out your hand and touch me. Okay, well, so she can't see. Um, 
probably. She talks about the dark that nibbles around her, nibbles at her flesh, which is something that we've read about with uh, fire keepers. Um, in some ways, I'm, I'm probably stretching a little bit from what we know, but um, she's dark, she's blind, and darkness surrounds her. Um, humanity, dark, you know what I mean? So she might be a fire keeper. And I just love how this animation, they could oh, not get to actually yes, touch her. There you are. So close, indeed. And I am not entirely alone just yet. Praise the merciful gods above. Maybe it was her talisman. Oh, forgive me. I am Irina of Karim. Karim? I came to this land so that I might be a firekeeper. Mm. Your touch has freed me from the darkness. Ooh. You are a champion then. I am weak and unfit to tend the flames. But if it would not trouble you, might I enter into your service instead? Look, I got a friend who's a firekeeper, and if you're wanting to become a firekeeper, I mean, maybe you should uh, speak with her. But uh, if you want to serve me, um, I'm sure I could use some help on my journey as well. Oh, thank you, sweet champion. She calls me champion as well. I shall take my vows. I, Irina of Karim, solemnly swear to serve you. Interesting. So now we see this guy, Eigen. Who I think they say, I, again, I'm not, I'm not as well versed, but they say this is a, um, <laughs> dry range, oh, range battle for that, maybe. Um, they say that this is similar to a guy from Dark, uh, Demon Souls, so I don't know. I don't know well enough, but uh, let's talk to him. Hmm. Another one of those unkindled, are you? I'm a champion, actually. All you faceless undead, behaving as if you deserve respect. I'm a champion, though. Now you've gone and rescued the wench. Hmm. How very quaint. Pitying creatures that are beyond hell. I don't know that. <laughs> maybe she. Uh, maybe I can help her. <sighs> Very well. I'm sick of looking after her at any rate. Hmm. I'm Egon, a knight of Karim. I am allied to you for as long as you assure the girl's safety, and only for that long. <laughs> gotcha. So Kareem always had shifty characters, you know, we had Latrak, we had Oswald the Pardoner, um, who I guess wasn't shifty, but he certainly, like, dealt with some, like, things that were against the gods and, and against the nature of humanity. Um, and, uh... You know, Igon certainly seems shifty, but Irina is from Karina, Karim, and she doesn't seem shifty at all. She seems like Rhea. What's the matter? My terms are very simple. I am allied to you for as long as you assure the girl's safety. And I didn't talk about it, but she said she came and only for that long. She came to the land to become a firekeeper, <laughs> which is interesting because, you know, in the past few games, what's the matter? <laughs> um, we've talked about coming to um, the land because they're undead or because whatever. I am going to rage. Um but in this game, it seems like becoming a firekeeper is 
is one of the things that people come to this land for. Because you certainly don't come to this land to be a champion of Ash. You come to this land because... Like, like you're dead if you're a champion of Ash. You've already, like, died. So... It's interesting that they're... Tr oh. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay, so, yeah, again, I mean, this is another one of those things where, um, yeah, I mean, great. There's this guy. He, I mean, he doesn't turn out to be Sigmire, but, I mean, he, um, I don't know. There's a lot of fan service in this, in this game. Uh, and I think in some ways, like Dark Souls 2, right? Like, I think a lot of people misunderstand Dark Souls 2 and its lore. I think there's a lot of stuff here that, like, can be forgiven. But, like, this is just weird. Like, why... It just makes Dark Souls 2 look really silly. And I suppose a lot of people love that, but... I, I would have preferred if they just did something completely different. I mean, for the most part, they did. Icon, Arena, Yol... <laughs> you know, all these things are definitely new ideas, but I mean, okay. Hmm. 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 Oh. Pardon me, I was absorbed in thought. I am Siegbert of Katarina. Siegbert, and from Katarina. To be honest, I'm in a bit of a pickle. Have you ever walked near a white birch only to be struck by a great arrow? Yes. Well, if I'm not mistaken, they come from this tower. Good. I can... Whoever it is, I'm sure I can talk some sense into them. Yes, maybe you can. But I have to find a way up. And that's just the trouble. This lift only goes down, you see, and... Uh, mm. Well, that doesn't get me anywhere. Hmm. Okay. This lift. Hmm. Yeah, well, okay, so it's a tough puzzle. I know. So you can go down, and that will cause him to go up, which uh, we're going to want him to do in some regard, but I'm just going to go up myself because I want to... Uh, I want to talk some sense into this giant. Now this looks like Sense Fortress. Like the way that you go up to the giant up there. So yeah, he's, he's, yeah, I mean this is like straight up Go territory. Or Goth. I help any time. I help any time. He helps any time. And he gives us a young white branch. Branch of a white birch received from a giant, apparently as a token of friendship. Become, become something that blends into the surroundings, consume with use. Good friend, no hit. So yeah, there is a uh, white birch. Uh, down here. Right, that thing right there. And, um... Yeah, he protects the white birch. For some reason. Uh, there's lots of white birches around uh, the game. And he protects every one of them. So every time, now that we've made peace, he will now fire upon us when we're in trouble around those white birches. I actually don't know how I get up there, but whatever. So, um, yeah. This is the other half of the Undead Settlement. Um, mm. Mm. This looks like there's ah. some sort of demon oh, over there. Don't disappear like that. Like you have me down my wallet. 
But thanks to you, an epiphany has struck me square in the head. I've unraveled the riddle of this inscrutable lift. <laughs> I mean, I will say that I think this character might be a little bit more entertaining than Sigmire. Which is great. I just, I don't know. I feel like they could have put that energy into another character. On some days, I begin to doubt myself. I went up the tower, so I thought. Then somehow ended up here. I'm not exactly sure what happened. You're useless. Anyhow, do you see that? That humongous beast? Yes. I'm no coward and I have a steady hand, but that thing makes my skin crawl. Looks like a demon. How now? Think twice before you go down that road. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go. I could try talking some sense into him. Very noble, Sigurd. No, I think not. He's far too overheated. Ugh, I've got to use my head and think. Hmm. I could try... Alright, well... Just looking at this building over here. Oh, interesting. Just trying to identify all the areas that I, um, No! You should have waited! Well, I, Zigward of the Knights of Katarina, so I like by your twice. side! Ah! Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that was, but we got a, uh, fire gem. Found in rare cases inside demons. Huh. <sighs> that was quite a performance. <laughs> but you mustn't get in over your head. I won't. We unkindled must put our duties first. Okay. But, for the moment... We have a toast to make. Sigbrow. Again, this instantiates that maybe their last name is Sieg. Because um, they're Sigward, Sigmeyer, Sigland. Oops. And this is a Sieg brow or a Sieg brew or a Sieg drink. Sieg drink. To your valor, my sword, and our victory together. <laughs> <laughs> so he gives us the toast gesture. Gesture. Well, I'm going to have myself a little nap. The only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. Again, you don't, you know, you don't see this type of stuff from the Sigmire character. I love it. Yeah, okay, so he naps, yep. Yeah. Then we get to sleep. Great. I like how they give you a homework bone because there's actually, I mean, I guess you can complete this area or whatever, but you can't get back otherwise. Alright.
There's the item right there. I thought there was something here. Am I like going crazy? Okay. There's nothing here apparently. It's a club. Yeah, here's the large club. Characterized by savage leaping attacks. War cry. Okay, nothing much to that. Okay. We got a pale tongue. And the northern set. Proof of a red orb invader's victory over a host of embers. Claiming tongues as trophies was originally the practice of an infamous troop of invaders who offered them to their speechless goddess. <clears throat> That's not part of another... The ear was a souvenir of reprisal in Dark Souls 1. Was there any tongues in two? Who's the speechless goddess? Uh, actually, we're gonna do this. Iron helm of a stalwart northern warrior engraved with an ornate pattern. Iron defensive wear grants superior stability. Being from the north, it should also offer resistance to the cold, which indicates a frost. Yeah. See there, but the northern set is actually really good. <laughs> There's still Sig Sigurd just sitting there. All right, let's get through this area. Red but red bug pellet. Medicinal pellet made from crushed insects. The red type temporarily boosts fire damage. Prepared in the Cathedral of the Deep by evangelists who dole them out to followers to ease their suffering when they burn. So they're burning everyone there at the Cathedral of the Deep. Again, like this is so much. I mean, I think I feel like it, I don't know, there's some things Dark Souls Three does really well, some things it doesn't do very well. You know, and blah blah blah. And every game's got their own thing. But like again, the fact that the alluring skulls and the red bug, bug pellets are in places where the evangelists are is really smart. Like. It gives context to their item, like the location of all the items. More people turning into trees. I kind of don't like this little thing here. Like, you can't cause these guys to fall down. You can only do it by actually like opening this. And by then you already like the swarm I don't know it's fine. And as promised, some evangelists were just staring at each other. Uh, can I draw them?
Yes. We're just gonna catch them all. my stats by going to luck, but I certainly do want these uh, extra items. Like, I would love to raise my and discover. <laughs> the bastard's curse. Look at how many undead were tortured here. Sigurd is still, still just chilling there, sleeping. You get Flynn's ring. Ring of Flynn, the eulogized thief. Lowering equip load increases attack power. Flynn fought with the wind on his side and was a hero among the weak and poor. Yet even his admirers knew that it was little more than an idyllic fable. Oops. Yeah, we don't know much about Flynn from Dark Souls 2. Um, but yeah. It's nice that they kind of build up the lore as much as they can. Homeward Bones. Okay. There's some really interesting stuff down here, actually. Okay, where's my lowest one? Okay, there. Mira vest, mirror stuff, and a chlorine theory. Okay, well we're definitely wearing the chlorine theory. This old ring is named for its decorative green blossom, and its luster is long since faded. Garb worn by Mira knights sent on journeys. This hard leather vest is bestowed only upon proven knights. Knights travel afar to fulfill their sacred duties, but few are ever able to deliver on their pounds. This is the way to do this. Like, I don't think. There she is. Evangelist robe. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I want all this stuff. I don't think this opens from this side. Okay. But I want to read all this stuff, so I'm glad I can get some. Robe of an evangelist sent from the cathedral. These teachers, all women, came to enlighten inhabitants of the undead settlement and sent carriers on the path of sacrifice. I've, I found out what his name was. Uh, 
between videos. The guy uh, is named uh, Hawkwood. We'll learn that later. But Hawkwood uh, is the one that told us about the path of sacrifices. Okay, so now um, we can clear out this area. What are we looking at? Yeah, we're we're getting close here. So why don't we? I'm just gonna grab this ember. I don't need to clear out this area because there's nothing there. I think it's just a wearing skull. Um, if there is something there, I'll come back again. You know, off screen or off screen during next video. I'm just gonna try to get through and beat the boss here. Okay. Uh, and I killed these guys. It's been that long since we've rested. Wow, okay. But now we can finally come back here and we don't have to worry about those arrows hurting us. In fact, they're gonna hurt everyone else, not us. I suppose it's still possible for us to get hurt, but... Should be fine. Man, we have so much... This just... I think the levels are just a lot more in-depth. Just in the amount of things that we can do. Right. <laughs> he gets rubbish. You can actually get his weapon. What does rubbish say in this case? Who in the right mind would bother carrying this around? Perhaps you need help. Well, that's what it said in the first game, too. Yeah, you can see all these arrows attacking all these people. Which is kind of cool. So yeah, we don't have a lot to fear. You can see there's this pine tree. And around it are embers. Young White Ranch, which I think have a different description. So I'm gonna read those. Okay. Little Dusk's first sorcerer's staff eventually became a seedling, and then three, three white birch saplings. The young branch is said to still contain echoes of Little Dusk's capriciousness. So there you go. That's why. I mean, I don't know why this guy in particular protects the trees, but that says what the significance of those trees are. And we have our fur, and you see this is a real big one. Undead bone shard. I want that so badly. Uh, undead bones that yet burn. Cast it into the shrine bonfire to boost the recovery, recovery provided by Estus. The bonfire cinders are the bones of undead, and a bone that still burns is a fresh cinder indeed. Before feeding upon death, one must first pray to it. So the sublime bone does talked about a saint that threw himself into the fire. This is like a similar kind of point. Um, that there's still, it still burns, like, so it's, it's, it's something related to those who have burnt themselves in the past. It's a lot easier without the uh, great scythe. Attacks with this large scythe normally used crop for crop, tar crop harvesting are effective at breaking past sh shields. The magnificent sharp curved blade instills fear in opponents. Perhaps it is their survival instinct at work. Neck swipe. This attack aims for the scruff out of a foe's neck and when successful functions as a headshot inflicting heavy damage. I like how they took all of the like worker um, um, 
weapons from the first game, or at least from the first few games. I don't know if there's others, but at least those. And then um, made them go in the place where there's workers. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Uh, is there someone that I can summon? L Lapras? <laughs> Okay, I guess I'm summoning him. I didn't mean to do that. And Gwen. I thought there was like a person that you could summon here. Like a, an NPC. I'm trying to look for NPCs, really. But we'll go with Lapras. Okay, yeah, whatever. All right, so yeah, this is the Great Hollow. Let's see, there's this tree here that, I don't know. Oh, come on. Come on. Curse rotten tree wood. Um, yeah, and all we need to do is break the sacks. Lapras. Let's see these things hanging from the top branches. Those come important later. Oh, so you can see more people come from that area. There's an infinite spawn. Oops. Oh my god, Lapras is almost dead. Dude. This is like the easiest boss. There we go. Now I can get to the next stage. Nothing else to break. The center will always do really well. I don't know. Yeah, it's almost dead. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on. Kill it, Lapras. Oh, I guess I might have done that. Thanks, Lapras. Oh, he was a warrior of sunlight. So we got the sunlight metal, the transposition kiln, and the soul of the rotten great wood. Rotted great wood. And we have now come down to the area where we found the the mound makers. And someone just died up there for me. Thank you. Now the thing is, is if you don't come down here first. Hudrick, who, I mean, we he invaded us. He, here he is now. Die. He died because this cursed great wood fell on him. And we can st well, now we're, we can be in the covenant. We can still pray at the sacrificial altar and everything. But we couldn't join if uh, if, uh, if we didn't come here before we fought the boss. All right, let's read everything. Oh, we're at an hour. We have so much to do. Um, okay. 
So, uh, soul of the rot rotted great wood um, used to acquire many souls. Ever since its establishment, all manner of curses have managed to seep into the undead settlement. The worst of them were sealed away inside a spirit tree, but eventually the curses took their toll. A medal received by members of the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant for victory over the final foe when summoned. The summoner also gains the same medal. The medal engraved with the holy symbol of the sun is slightly warm and reminds one of the great honor of a shared victory. And we have the Transposition Kiln, which, uh, old transposing kiln, and not transposition, transposing kiln from Corland, crafted with stitched crystal lizard hide, which is interesting. It, it has like the crystalness. I wonder if it's related to Seath. Given give to Ludlith, Lord of Cinder, to conduct soul transposition. This kiln can transpose twisted souls to craft special items with their concentrated essence, deemed forbidden by those unable to make proper use of it. Yeah, it looks like there's like the crystal lizard hide surrounding a universe inside. Interesting. Alright. Pit of Hollows is what it's called. Alright. Let's talk to everyone and then we can call it a night. Or call it a episode. You haven't given up, yet you can make better use of this. Oops, I skipped over. Heavy gem? Okay. I don't need it. Not now I've flown the coop. <laughs> the undead legion of Farron is a caravan of undead, sworn by wolf's blood to contain the abyss. The legion will bury a kingdom at the first sign of exposure. Joyous bunch, really. Gaining admission to the legion is a matter of some ceremony. Inside their keep, snuffing out the flames of three altars, opens the door to the wolf blood. Even accursed undead want to believe they're special, it seems. I pity the sorry souls. <laughs> okay, so wolf's, wolf's blood, and they've. they're trying to protect the abyss? I mean, it sounds like Artorias and Seth to me. We see up there, on the Abyss Watcher's throne, a lot of swords that look similar to Artorias' sword, and a wolf's hide. Gaining admission to the Legion is a matter of some ceremony. Inside Snuff the out three flames. Snuffing out the flames of three altars opens the door, door to, to the, the wolf, wolf blood. blood. Even a cursed undead. I... <laughs> okay. What do you have to say, yo? Oh, I would do it as I have said. Alas, but uh, I'm weeping. But though he does have more stuff. The ephemeral blade only exists as an extension of the caster, but its power is said to rival that of physical great swords. Even the most obstinate magic purists may resort to the spell in times of crisis. Be safe, champ. Okay. Hopefully Grey Rat feels better about things now. Ah, there you are. I was thinking. Okay. You know I'm a petty thief. Yes. Well, perhaps I'll go on the prowl. Everyone's dead or hollowed away anyway, right? So I might as well fetch some weapons or treasure for you. Well, what do you say? Pillage, go and get me more stuff. I like it. Thank you. You will not be disappointed. Grey Rat the Thief was once a well known name. You seem. Until I ended up rotting in a cell. You seem smarter than the other <laughs> thralls that we've come across. Grey Rat until I. 
You don't have anything new now, do you? I wonder if I should buy that bastard sword. Gray rabbits. <laughs> I meant to do Goodbye. that. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. You don't have an S to share. Ah, right? Just good, wasn't it? Oh, can we reinforce? No. We need to. Oh, yeah, we didn't get any more. Oh, but, okay, so. We did get what we need. Let's read all these. Heavy gem. Uh, used to forge Farron. Great swords. Okay. We learned from this from Carthus. Raw's Lothric. And fires inside demons. So, refined. Do we not have refined? Okay. Heavy, sharp, raw. Okay, I thought we had a refined gem. Okay, never mind. Never mind. And we do have 20,000 souls, but we're not going to do that yet. Um, we obviously have to talk to Corlin, um, but let's first talk to the other person we saved. Oh, Champion of Ash. Welcome back. I was not meant to be a firekeeper, but I am honored to serve you beside the bonfire. The gods are ever merciful. My gratitude lies with them and with you. I am yours now. Your wish is my command. She was never meant to be a firekeeper? Is that a thing? Is that a fate that some have? Or can you create a firekeeper from anything? Or is she, yeah, I mean, is that the other thing? Is she not good enough? Like, is it, is it's not a fate, but it's more like, can you, you know, can you be good enough? And she wasn't? I don't know. It's interesting, we have learned miracles different from purchase item. She has heal. Elementary miracle cast by clerics. Replenishment. Punishment is a relic of the old Lloyd faith, whose cleric knights were unfaltering in battle. So, so, you know, I've talked about All Father Lloyd being a god, um, especially since he's on a coin in Dark Souls One, as are other gods, including one god named Old Man McLoif, which again goes to my theory that there are no gods, that they're just regular people, but by the point of Dark Souls 3, I mean, we can completely abandon that idea of being interesting because it's all so in much in the past that we are, it is a religion at this point, which I think, you know, it might be fun to play this game backwards and play Dark Souls 3 first and then kind of learn the origins of some of these gods. But anyway, they say all Lloyd Faith. I don't, is that the way of white? Or is that a different offshoot of the way of white? Or what? I don't know. It's interesting. Crescent Tears. Again, it was called different things and different things. Miracle taught by Morn, the Archbishop's Apostle. Um, okay. Who's the Archbishop? Who's, who's Morn? Um, cures bleeding, poison, and frost for self and those in the vicinity. Crescent Tears is a tale of many deaths surrounding the goddess Kaitha, of whom Morn was a known follower. And homeward. Miracle taught to traveling clerics returns Castor to the last bonfire used for resting. It would normally link to one's homeland, only the curse of the undead has twisted its power, redirecting Castors to a bonfire, perhaps for the undead. The bonfire serves as home, which is almost exactly what it said in one. And she has the saint's ring. A ring bestowed upon a Kareem saint. In Kareem, the saints give voice to the ancient tales. They memorize countless cumbersome sacred books and read them in sonorous tones, a function for which they are widely renowned. So this is a new mechanic in this game where you can find tomes or books with miracles in them and you can give them to you know various people it sounds almost like this is unique to kareem and that like perhaps you know this is why it's new because like we're dealing with someone from kareem and, and that's how we're finding it or it could just be that 
cream like other places this happened because we, we certainly see it in a bunch of other characters but it also could indicate that we might be in Kareem or you know might be in a place that became I, I don't you know I'm not gonna theorize yet but you know in my home of Kareem I was a nun okay so I would be pleased to share the tales of miracles with you although to be honest I only know a few but if I had a divine tome, I could tell you many tales and more. Oh, only I cannot see. Terribly sorry, but you'll have to find me a divine tome in Braille. <laughs> That's a very specific ask. You know, in my home, okay. I would oh, So I don't think she says much right there. Have a pleasant journey, Champion of Ash. I pray. Okay. Um... Okay. Oh, Leonard is there. That's because we got the Pale Tongue, which indicates that we've invaded in one, but of course we didn't. We just found it, which is similar to what happens at Dark Souls 2. Well, hasn't it been some time? A little. I'm Leonard, the Ring Finger. Hmm. Remember me? Mm -hmm. I slipped you those red eyes some time ago. Yeah. You're making quite an effort of it, so I thought you might like to know. If you yearn for a proper red eye orb, one that is uncracked, then kill the Dark Wraith, survivor of the land swallowed by darkness. He has been a prisoner for many ages in the deepest cell in all Lothric. I can see it in your eyes. If you didn't invade, didn't pillage, whatever would you do? <laughs> well, I didn't do that, so I don't know what you're saying. If you fancy a proper red eye, or then kill the Dark Wraith, survivor of the land swallowed by darkness. He has been a prisoner for many ages in the deepest. I can see it in your. <laughs> it's interesting. Lothric is, in you know, keeping in a cell a Dark Wraith from New Londo or from. Potentially, I mean, it's the same ones that we fight in Yolando, but it could be potentially the ones that we fight and that that you would have seen in Ulusil, although we just didn't see any. It is the it is the type of which we fight in Yolando. But um, why is Lothric holding a, a dark wraith from ancient times in a cell? Oops. Key to the room of the lift that descends to the deepest dungeon in Lothric. A surviving dark wraith from the land swallowed by darkness is said to be held here. Hmm. We'll check that out later. Fret not, fret not, for I am a lord. Yes. Listen, before I was yeah, a yeah, the no, if... Just check. Yes. Oh, belike it is a transposing kiln in thy possession. Seeing better days, but methinks it shall suffice. Now, bring to me a twisted soul. Transposition is the art of extracting and coalescing the essence of a soul. In transposing a twisted soul, its true power transferred to thee. Hmm. Thy purpose is to seek lords and slay them. What's to fear in a little transposition now? Hmm. He seems like a pusher. Like he seems like he's like, this is forbidden art. It's what's, you know, been the bane of Corlin's like honor. But come on, you should do it. Like. You know, you're already doing this crazy thing. You might as well turn this pose, like. So, we have a bunch of stuff. Uh, Soul of the Rotted Greatwood um, gives us the Hollow Slayer Greatsword. Greatsword used for a lifetime by a masked knight. Harbors the fears that lurk within the minds of hollows and is particularly effective against them. Bestowed to a proper Mira knight long ago. 
two hand to execute special sword techniques, and it uses stance. It does kind of look like uh, Lucatil's sword from Mira. Not exactly, but I don't know, maybe it's that. Maybe it's um, Creighton's sword? Or something, a masked knight. Yeah, so it's Lucatil. We saw Lucatil's set in the Undead Settlement, too. So I guess one, you know, the 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 tree absorbed all these souls. So I guess Lucatil was there, or something, you know, similar descended, and they died and got absorbed into the tree. This great axe, a favorite among demons, soul of a demon. It's interesting. We killed a demon, but we didn't get a soul of a demon. But this appears. But anyway, this, this great axe, a favorite among demons, contains the strength of fire. The demons, born of chaos, harbor fire, and yet they are twisted and malformed such that they were never meant to be. The skill is briefly cause flame within to flare and smash upon earth and foes. So yeah, that's like the demon we fought, but we certainly didn't get a soul from that. Vort's great hammer. A great hammer wielded by Vort, the outrider knight of the Boreal Valley. In this case, I think Outrider just means that they rode out from Boreal. Like, they lived in Boreal, and they were a knight that was sent out, and they were an Outrider. Weapon is imbued with Frost, and causes Frostbite. Frost accumulates in the body, causing Frostbite, which saps one's help, health, lowers absorption, and slows stamina recovery. Yeah, so it's very close. And it gives you Perseverance, um, which is... Uh, close to what the other um, um, this is hammer but mace close to what the other maces do give you one of the curses that festered within the belly of the great wood and a terrible weapon favored by Earl Arster the Emperor do we do we learn about Arstor somewhere I feel like that name's familiar the spears and wreath and rotten Heavily poisonous meat, defeating foes, restores HP. Shield splitter. Take a large step forward and make a single focus thrust to puncture enemy shields. I mean, it certainly looks like uh, Ornstein's um, spear or any Dragon Slayer spear. Potentially the one from the uh, um, the Firstborn. I mean, it doesn't look specifically like anything, but it. I mean, it looks like a Dragon Slaying spear with the hilt up at the top. Demon's Fist, a demonic fist that burns with fire essence. Its wielder can release the, this power through use of its skill. When two-handed, fists are equipped to each hand. Flame Whirlwind, spin through opponents with abandoned flaming fist, fist, fists outstretched. Using a strong attack while spinning utilizes your momentum to slam the ground with both fists. And Pontiff's Left Eye, again, so Soul of Boreal Valley Vort. Emma says, oh, Bort keeps an eye on things, and I know that you can, the pontiff's left eye is like a, the eyes are important with Pontiff Sullivan. Bewitched ring that Pontiff Sullivan bestowed upon his knights. Knights who peer into the black orb are lured into battles of death, transformed into frenzied beasts. No wonder the pontiff only provides these rings to those dispatched to foreign lands, and it recovers HP with successive attacks. So Pontiff Sullivan, um, probably of the Boreal Valley, sent out this knight and gave him an eye, and that eye transformed him into a beast, and he's no longer who he was. And no wonder the pontiff only provides these rings to those dispatched to foreign lands. So Boreal Valley is not in Lothric. A lot of stuff there. I mean, it could just be random stuff, but it is important to this game, so I'm pointing it out. <laughs> it could be like Earl Arster, like, okay, who's that? We never meet him again or whatever, so. Now, now, do not be away over long. But uh, in this case, Pond of Solomon is important. 
Um, I think that's it. Welcome home, Ashen One. Very well. Then touch the pig nut. Okay. I mean, we're just way over. Yeah, let's just. Oh, I said I wanted to go up figure. Farewell, Ashen One. Um, alright, well, we're, you know, obviously way over time here, so, um, but I think that's it. <laughs> so, um, thanks for watching this episode, and next episode, we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna start with the Undead Soma, but we're gonna continue on to, uh, well, as Hawk, was, Hawk would told us, the path of sacrifices. See you then.